Okay, so I'm in a bit of an unusual location. Where could I be? Well, uh, the title probably gives it away somewhat. But I'm on the Wilderness Adventure Ride, at least in the original location, where when it was operating eight years ago. Unfortunately, it did close in 2012. Uh, this was one of Canada's, if not the best, uh, log flume in the country. Um, and possibly, potentially, the world at the time that it was actually built in 1984 and 85. Um, so, yeah, it has been closed for eight plus years now. And over time, as you're about to see, the uh, actual route of the log flume, while it has been turned into a trail, of which you can follow most of the original path of the ride, uh, unfortunately, as you can see right behind me, we're at the uh, end of the, of the route. So uh, this is actually where the original lift hill was to take you to the top of the drop, which was one of the most impressive things if you aren't really creeped out about animatronics because inside there they had a lot of creepy animatronics that unfortunately got vandalized through time. That being said, I think this is kind of a unique uh, experience in the sense that you can actually still walk the trail of the log flume, so or at least the, uh, the ride itself. So that's what we're going to do on this quick little video, uh, which is part of a bigger video looking at Ontario Place itself. Toronto is actually unique too in the fact that on two islands, one man-made, one not so, uh, we've had two log flumes located on each island itself, which is kind of unique and interesting. Um, at least I like log flumes, so that's kind of cool. And fortunately I've been on both. I wish I had been here in 2012 when this uh, ride was originally announced to be closed, because then I could have gotten at least one last nostalgic ride on it because it has been quite a long time since I did ride it last. All right, so let's go on a little tour of the Wilderness Adventure Ride in 2020. I do remember this section of the ride because it was uh, pre the first lift hill, like the shorter lift hill. And when you careen through this section leading to the uh, bigger lift hill, the speed that you took in this area was great. And because of the trees and they had like animatronics located along the route, so, like cave, cavemen, uh, miners that uh, were, you know, doing their standard thing, you know, if you've been to, say, Knott's Berry Farm, they have a very similar themed log flume. But uh, for Canada, at least in Toronto, it was a remarkable ride at the time. It is still unfortunate that it's not here with us anymore. But uh, who knows, this area, if there's some foresight, could be turned into something interesting as well. Uh, if this area uh, has the regeneration that everyone, I guess, hopes it will over the next uh, couple decades.
So I'm actually in one of the lookout towers now uh, that you can still climb, which is really cool. I do like how like it's got a great view uh, on this side. And as I've sort of just tried to show you, there's a view of the original route down here where the log flume actually uh, went through. But you can see like the structures that they actually built for this ride to give you an impression. Obviously you can go on YouTube and find old POVs of it. But uh, yeah, it really is sort of sad that we don't have uh, modern POVs to really capture the magic of this ride for when it was originally opened. Because um, the first 10 years of it, while it was well maintained, it really was an uh, impressive attraction. Um, but yeah, you know, unfortunately now it just doesn't exist as part of the larger story of Ontario Place itself. But uh, you can still come down here and have a bit of a feel, because yeah, here I am in the lookout tower doing my thing. I'm not really sure what it is. I'm not going to show you what's underneath me though, because because this is still open, there is a bit of stuff uh, inside this booth that I'm not going to show you. So a little bit of a warning uh, to watch yourself as I'm doing right now um, when you come down here. So I've reached the terminus on this side, as you can see by the fence that I just showed you. I am a bit curious. I know that there is a bit of urban exploration of this site. In fact, it's already been probably thoroughly explored, um, which if you want, you can go online uh, and find other uh, documentation of things that I can't access right now. That being said, no guarantee that I won't try uh, to accidentally fall over uh, a fence later on uh, that will be edited maybe not so we're gonna go back to the other side which uh, the original station area is still uh, standing in addition to the uh, lift hill structure which you're about to see because there's some fantastic rock work on this ride or this former ride uh, which was part of its appeal and also how it just was situated in this area of the park so here we go So there you have it right behind me, the original lift hill structure. And you know, when you went on this ride for the first time, it was fascinating because you didn't know what was inside there. So it was part of the appeal. It was very similar, obviously, to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad uh, and the idea that you get an explosion at the top of the hill. But uh, you know, at the time, it, for those of us that hadn't, say, been to Disney World at that time, or at least that it seemed like such a uh, far off option or possibility, we had a little piece of that here, which was cool, and Canadiana. It's unfortunate that, like, say, during the Pan Am Games uh, a couple of years back, they didn't have this attraction still, which would have been, you know, an all-encompassing sort of uh, tale of what Canada was about, or at least, like, the frontier aspect of it. Um, I'm going through this cave, which originally, as you went up through, it's kind of creepy because inside there, there's, like, you know, darkness. Uh, it originally was, like, a uh, some animatronics in there as part of the whole lead up to the ride and uh, yeah they're obviously not there anymore but as you can see on this side you've got the track that leads you to the final drop which is just over there which is where we're headed now um, yeah the more you explore this thing and just see it's really a shame that a lot of the props and everything are still in place here uh, it's just it doesn't really I'm gonna do something a little scary here and I'm gonna have a look and see what's inside this hole All right, you kind of can see that. You can see like some wires. It goes back a bit. I promise this is not a scare vlog, but you never know. So what we're looking at here is the underneath of the original lift structure, because as you can see the angle of the lift hill, behind those boards is an access point to get in there. So I don't know what is exactly left 
inside the uh, lift hill structure itself, but with the condition of this place, I'm kind of thinking that there's a lot left in there still, because uh, there's a lot left here everywhere. Uh, also, this area is really very nice. It's beautiful. Like, it always was an impressive little pocket of Ontario Place. Ontario Place is a really remarkably designed area that just didn't get the TLC that it needed over the years. And this place is definitely a evidence of that. But the quality of the work, uh, I think at least on this structure, is unquestionable because this rock work looks just like it did probably the day it opened. Uh, it's nice and sturdy. It looks like it's supposed to look. It's probably still... It is fiberglass, but like it's holding up well considering the Canadian winter that it's had to deal with. Now, uh, we have a little bit of explore because right behind us here is the original station, which we'll go check out now. And then we'll go have a look at the lift hill, and that'll probably be the end of our tour, but a pretty extensive one. As you can see, there are still like troughs here for the original ride that are still here. Technically, you can't get in there and you know, safety first. So uh, yeah, you do actually still have some of the original paint from when this was a station. And as you can see by what's written, it is the entry station. The exit was at the bottom. I have never been in a log flume trough before, but I'm in one right now. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of get up to this one side. And now we're in the, the building for the return lift. Uh, there's still even water down in there. There's water down in there. But I'm not going for a swim. Uh, but yeah, there's like graffiti and stuff all around. But you can get some really cool sights of this thing uh, from this vantage point, obviously with the uh, hill in the background there.
Okay, I gotta wrap it up here. I honestly, well, to be honest, is I, you watch your step around here, because it's not made for people to be uh, milling about like I am. Um, I'm gonna take a shortcut, actually this way, the way I came. All on the side, this is a longer exploration than I thought, because like, there's a lot to kind of check out if you're in to, I don't know, urban exploration of abandoned attractions, because it's definitely a premium one here. Um, yeah, it's got a little intense in there in the sunlight. So we're gonna wrap this up here. That is the Wilderness Adventure Ride, circa 2020. It's very unfortunate, the state that it's in currently, obviously. But here's hoping that this whole area, uh, as I'm doing a larger video about it, we'll see some serious revitalization. Now, we're living in unsure times, so obviously that's not something I can really uh, speculate at the current state of things, but here's hoping because I want this structure to still be here for a reason. I don't really want it to sort of be lost um, because it obviously has a big, a big portion of memories for some of us uh, that used to come here as a kid. So that's the Wilderness Adventure Ride. If you guys have the chance, definitely come down here and check it out. It is one of the most unique things you can do in the city of Toronto for free.